Hello, I'm Anika from Made to Sew. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you some tips for making your own cording for a corded buttonhole. You're going to need to begin by cutting yourself some thread. You want to cut about six strands of the thread that you're planning on using, depending on how thick that thread is. But this is just a standard polyester Guterman thread, the Guterman Sew All Polyester. And as an example, I could be creating my buttonhole from this, so I want to use this as the filler cord. So I've gone ahead and cut these strands. You need to make sure that these are long enough for your cord. In terms of the length, I would say fold it in half and make sure that this is longer than the automatic buttonhole foot or longer than the buttonhole that you plan to create, plus about two inches or five centimeters on the end. Now, as well as using something like your standard thread that you're going to be sewing with, you can use something like a metallic thread, or you could use different colours or something if you want to add a little bit of interest to the cord inside your buttonhole. You are going to want to test it and have a little play to see what you like. Now what we're going to do is go to the machine with these. You want to make sure when we're stitching them on the machine that they all stay together. So you may want to twist them, you can grab either end and sort of twist in opposite directions, or one of the best things that I find is just to get some beeswax and run it all through the beeswax. And this will just sort of hold all of the layers together when you get to the sewing machine. Run it through a couple of times. Now you're going to want to begin by setting your machine to a small zigzag. The zigzag stitch on my machine is stitch two. Now you're going to want to amend the width of this stitch to be approximately one to 1.5 and the length is going to be about 0.5. Now I've positioned foot number 22 on my Benina and this is a foot designed for braiding or cording and it's got grooves at the front and also this little feature that will close on top of the thread. This will allow me to get the thread in position and to hold it in place. You can also use foot six and foot six has a bit of a groove on the underside of it which will help to allow the threads to travel through. I start by positioning the threads into that groove on the side and I generally try and put them all in the central groove if I can. And then I sort of close this little contraption across. Now I tend to hold about say two inches, four to five centimeters of thread at the back, so underneath the presser foot, just to hold it all stable. And then you can begin. And what you're planning on doing here is literally a little zigzag stitch. It's worthwhile holding these threads and keeping them out of the way as well to start with. And basically, I'm just going to be doing a tiny little zigzag stitch over the threads. It does not need to look neat, it does not need to look pretty. It's a case of holding them all together and creating that cording. Now, your machine should feed the threads through the machine, but if you need to, you can ever so slightly sort of guide them through yourself. And all you need to do is just hold them. I tend to hold them at the front and hold them at the back and just sort of guide it through the machine. And you can look quite closely to make sure that you are actually doing a zigzag over the threads. Feel free to amend the width and the length of that zigzag if you need to. And you would simply continue this all the way along until you have joined the threads together using this little zigzag stitch. And that is my finished cord ready to use to create a corded buttonhole. I've used obviously a different color on the machine here. I used black so that you can slightly see the color difference. And the key is that this does not have to be neat. Hopefully you can see that it isn't the neatest thing. All you need to be doing is sort of sewing or attaching the number of different threads together and joining them as one so that you can use them as a cord. Then I would go ahead and complete my corded buttonhole. If you want to see how to do this properly, please follow the link here to my corded buttonhole tutorial. I've used the cord that I've made and attached that to the automatic presser foot, just like normal and then I would complete the buttonhole just like normal. For this example, I am sewing over in the black thread again, but obviously if your aim was to actually keep all of this the same color, you would use the same color thread for the cord and for the thread of the buttonhole. Just so that you know, I'm doing a stitch length of 0.4 millimeters here. And how nice is that? You cannot actually see the blue thread at all. The black stitching that I've done on top has completely masked it. If you wanted to see a bit of colour through, you would obviously need to reduce the length of your buttonhole or satin stitch. 
You may need to amend the width or the size of the gap in the buttonhole or the length of the stitches if you have a very thick cording that you're using. And you would finish this off just as I show you in the corded buttonhole tutorial. You would pull the cords at this end to finish the start of the buttonhole and then you would thread them through to the wrong side of your fabric, tie them off and finish them. If you struggle to pull the cording through, then you can finish the front and the back of the cord in the same manner. Thread it through to the wrong side and finish it off. Thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the series and that you find these videos useful.